Hello, welcome to the Gear Junkie Weekly Roundup alongside Mary Murphy and Sean McCoy. I'm Adam Ruggiero, and we are going to round up a few of the week's big headlines. Of course, I'm excited because I just returned from Moab. How was Moab? Moab was exciting and terrific and beautiful. I was riding the White Rim Trail uh, with Hydro Flask, and we were checking out some new mountain bike packs. Uh, it's stunningly beautiful. We took three days to bike between 70 and 80 miles. It was both humbling and inspiring. Uh, and you can look for it at gearjunkie.com when I get around to writing about it. Uh, but yeah, we're going to write, uh, I'll do a little write-up on their new mountain bike pack, so stay tuned for that. I'm not going to say anything more than that. Very How cool. was your week? It's been busy here in Gear Junkie. We had a lot of cool stories this week, and I think uh, we got some good ones to jump into. What a cool segue, Sean. <laughs> right? First and foremost, this is a really big deal. Uh, Nim, Nermal Nims Perja is trying to set the record for climbing every 8,000 meter peak. There are 14, 14 of, them, of them, correct? He just finished the 13th. The standing record is eight years, and he's about to do it in under a year, which is in a season. astounding. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, like crazy. seven months. Where, Mary, I'm going to start record? with you. Yeah, he, he, oh, he, yeah he's aiming like, at like seven yeah, months. Yeah, less than yes. seven months. Yeah, he started. Uh, and he, his uh, application was just approved by China to climb the final peak, which is Shisha Pangma. <laughs> Shisha Pangma. Shisha Pangma. Yeah. We think. Um, Mary, how big a deal do you think this is? I think this is a pretty big deal. I mean, um, first of all, to an undertaking of climbing Everest and Lotse peaks in one day. Um, and all the other records that he's beaten, climbing so many peaks in a season, um, in the spring, uh, dealing with park permits um, mm -hmm. on both the Nepalese and Tibet side, um, has been really interesting to watch. And he's climbing them really fast. So Yeah, um, is this, Sean, is this the greatest alpinist today? I mean, current living, it certainly would be very arguable. I mean, obviously there are all kinds of different things that could you know, Happen. justify other people being great alpinists, but to knock out every 8,000 meter peak in a, less than a year, seven months, is just, it's a, yeah. it's an endurance yeah. feat. It's just incredible. Plus, he basically cameoed Adrian Bollinger on his K2 summit. Yeah. Just, like, showed up for moral support. Yep. Like, if you're showing up for other people's moral support on, like, one of the deadliest peaks in the world, yeah. you're pretty badass. Yeah. yeah. It's ridiculous. Uh, so, in a word, do you think he's going to do it? I think so. Yeah, he's got like two or three weeks to climb one final peak, and he did three or four of them in 24, 48 hours. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. Plus, yeah. also seven more years just to beat the record. Just yeah, to beat the record. That's true. So. That's true. Um, <laughs> Sean, this year is he going to finish the season? Uh, I I think so. I I would be shocked at this point if he didn't. Honestly, I think that it's just. I think that the question and the conversation that's going to go on in the alpine community is like, okay, so is this the greatest feat of all time? Because. There's a lot of other things. Ooh. People have done, you know, lots of routes or they've done every mountain without oxygen or every mountain up a new route or, you know, the first person to do something that's that's never been done. He hasn't done those things, but he's done something that nobody else has been able to in a time frame that's insane. So, yeah, so stay tuned because we'll keep track of it on Gear Junkie and let you know as soon, if and when it happens as soon as it does. Also, Nims, if you want to be on the show, just uh, hit us <laughs> up at gearjunkie.com. <laughs> All right, the second story of the week uh, came thanks to Mary's press trip uh, with the North Face. Mary, do you want to tell us what went down? Yeah, so we were up in Rocky Mountain National Park uh, looking at the North Face's new uh, outerwear technology, specifically the membrane inside it, which is called Future Light. Um, it's been... It's fairly well known, I feel like, at least. They've been doing a lot of marketing, they've been doing a lot of development, a lot of prototypes over the past two years, um, and it's finally come out. So we essentially went up and tested the, the final products before they hit the market. Um, and because it was 65 and sunny in Colorado, <laughs> we tested their ultralight layer, which was, it's essentially for trail running. Uh, it's lightweight, it's breathable. The whole premise of the technology of Future Light is that it's both waterproof and breathable at the same time, and to a high degree of both of those things in sure. outerwear. So you touched on a good point, and you said it's well known because of marketing, and I'm personally skeptical because they've the North Face has a, a lot of marketing oomph, right? Mm -hmm. And in my experience, there isn't much of anything that's waterproof and breathable. It's very much one or the other. Uh, and it's kind of a trade-off. Do you really think that this is significantly different than the best Gore-Tex membrane? 
It's hard to say. Um, I only tested it in warmer weather, and I only tested their ultralight layer. I didn't, for example, get to test a ski shell, which would have given me a lot more context with my experience with Gore-Tex and other products um, of how those membranes can directly compare, essentially. Um, but so far, I think what they want the product to be, I think it is that. And I think I'm looking forward to testing it more and actually um, figuring out like what else they're going to, for example, they're putting in tents, they're putting yeah. in hiking <laughs> shoes. Um, so that your shoes can breathe. Um, Sean, what does your spidey sense say well, about Future Light? What was the jacket? It's the flight jacket. It's flight specifically jacket. the so one that you tested. So flight Future Light jacket. Um, you had that in the office. I, I haven't yeah. worn one um, or tested it myself, but feeling it, it seems like a really good jacket for running. I, I could see it uh, having run like ultras and other, you know, cold weather running and being stuck out in storms. I could see it and I think it will be much more waterproof than most of the highly breathable jackets on the market. It just seems yeah. like it'll be unlike a lot of the light ones. Oh, like is joining us. She's, she likes running a lot. Um, I think that it's going to be a lot, a lot more waterproof than a lot of yeah. those. Uh, but breathability wise is where I kind of run into the question, like, will it be able to shed the moisture as you're running? Um, I will say I was surprised cause I usually don't like running in jackets. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless it's really cold, which again, when I tested it, it wasn't cold enough to the point where I usually would be wearing a jacket, but it's breathable. Um, so, you know, like a wind layer or something, it makes a lot of sense. Um, it's air permeable too, right? It is. It's air permeable. It's windproof. It's breathable. Um, I... I liked wearing it. The run I went on, I only ran like five miles. But um, so far, it's a good layer. It's only um, seven ounces, right? Right around yeah. there, seven, eight yeah, ounces, right depending on the seven size. seven ounces, depending on the size. Ranges from like seven to 8.4 ounces for It's, it's a cool piece. Range. I mean, this is one of those, like, I feel that we've been listening to this conversation for a long time from the North Face about this product coming out. And while their promises and their claims are pretty extravagant in my mind, I yeah. also think that it does seem like it'll live up to it in a lot of senses. I don't, I don't think it's going to be a holy grail of like, well, your, all your problems are solved just buy this jacket. But I do think that we're going to have a little, really good option from them on this that'll compete yeah. with anything else on the market probably. Another another point to note is they've got you know all these videos up now um, that have you know like the air permeability. Um, they have everything digitalized and, you know, water, um, and they kind of design all these videos around how the technology actually works, um, but it's a lot harder to understand, like, you know, they don't actually explain what it is um, to a certain degree in the videos. You know, you look at it, and you're like, oh, wow, air passes through and water doesn't, um, but if you would like to know more of the science behind it, you can read the review on gearjunkie.com. And yes, uh, which brings us to our third and final story of the week, which is my personal favorite. I think Mary did a great job on this one. And it is that time of year, again, when it's time to vote for the fattest bears in Katmai National Park. Mary, why yes. do we do this? So every year, Katmai National Park in Alaska, first of all, it's fun. Like, Obviously, why else? Like fat, bears. Bears. fat bears, they're um, awesome. They, I believe they started it... Um, in the early 2000s, and they essentially started this campaign where people who had been visiting the park were really curious about the bears who live there. Um, they have a really important river with like salmon habitat and a lot of bears that live in the area, so visitors were wanting to know more about the bears. Um, and so over a period of years, they created the contest, which started as a photo contest, and now it's like a week-long celebration of the bears and how they're growing and eating and moving through life. Um, and you get to vote on the fattest bear. That's awesome. Yeah. How many bears are there? Um, a dozen? Ooh, I don't know. So it's bracket. It's a, it's it's a in March Madness here. style. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's like about 10 or so. I'd say 10 or 12. Yeah. Yeah. And do you have a favorite? I do. I really like and? Chunk. Okay, yeah. so you got to make this into an office pool. And I they really name all the bears. I think this should catch on because I think people should have a betting pool if it's legal to bet in your state. Um, <laughs> Because the pictures of these bears are hilarious, and it's on Katmai National Park's Facebook page if you want to check it out. Uh, this year, my money is on Grazer. It's hilarious, and the picture of last year's winner is... Yeah. It's just a chunky, puffy bear, uh, and I think it has... I don't know. I think it does a lot to raise awareness about bear habits and hibernation, which I think is kind of silly, yeah. but honestly, like, if this gets people like tuned into national parks and wanting to go visit... All the way up in Alaska to see a national park, just so they can see a bear, a bear, a yeah. fat bear. 
I'm the, all the for fat it. bear. That's their favorite fat yeah. bear. Yeah. Well, and they said that this year is uh, a record run for the it salmon like doubled, in this area, which yeah. is really surprising yeah. in my mind because the runs in, in Alaska have been they've been facing a lot of challenges lately. I feel like I could eat salmon indefinitely, and I don't think I'd get any bigger. It's you'd have they eat a lot of salmon. I think I could eat more salmon than bear. <laughs> I'm just saying I have nothing to base that on, but I really am confident. So our next Anyways. live will be Adam <laughs> eating an entire king of salmon. Uh, those are our three stories from the week. Before we go, Mary, is there anything you're working on or looking ahead to next week that you're excited about? Absolutely nothing. Nothing. Absolutely she's, nothing. She's taking a week off. <laughs> Sean, well, I will be elk hunting late next week, starting, and I've got a couple of cool products, uh, mostly. Uh, taking out a Sierra Designs Flex Capacitor, uh, which I have used before, but I've never used elk hunting, and I'm kind of excited to use this pack uh, because our trip requires a lot of heavy carrying in and out, plus some trips back and forth carrying meat probably, hopefully. Fingers crossed. So that's going on, and uh, looking forward to being out in the woods for a while. Cool. Awesome. And I will be working on my trip report and rundown of Hydro Flask's new mountain biking pack. I'm not going to say anything more just now, but look for that coming up uh, soon, possibly next week. So for Mary and Sean and Laika under here somewhere, I'm Adam Ruggiero, and we will see you next week.